The following is a paid program, and the views expressed on this show do not represent the views of WJZFM, CBS Radio, its sponsors, or affiliates. <laughs> this is Dog Talk with Michael J. Solar on 1057 The Fan. Every Sunday morning from 7 to 8, Michael, master trainer and owner of Blue Line Canine Dog Training, will bring you the answers you need, making your life with your dog the best it can be. <laughs> Now, here's Michael J. Solar with Dog Talk on 105.7 The Fan. Hey, guys. <clears throat> hey, guys. Happy Mother's Day out there to all my doggy moms and regular moms, of course, as well. I hope you guys have had a great week uh, in between our shows, and I hope you're returning back. And if not, you're going to be joining us new today, and uh, we're hoping to make you uh, longtime fans of our new show here, Dog Talk. Uh, today's episode is really going to be just about becoming a mom of your own dog and how, how much fun and exciting it is because it is Mother's Day. So we want to have everybody call in and let us know about all the excitement choices they had when they were picking out their, their new best friend or I should say technically their new child, uh, bringing them home, either adopted or purchased, uh, uh, bringing their dog in, why they chose their dog. So hopefully we get some really fun callers calling in telling us how they're going to be celebrating their Mother's Day with their four four-legged friends. Uh, our phone number here is going to be 410-583-1057. Again, 410-583-1057. And if you have any questions, you can also check us out live on Facebook, uh, which is going to be at Michael J. Solar Dog Talk. Uh, we even have a really cool uh, special guest today, which is going to be my wife, Tara Solar. She's uh, here celebrating her Mother's Day on Dog Talk. Uh, she's uh, a mother of, uh, let's say... Three kids and, and probably around nine or ten dogs now. Uh-huh. Uh, so it's going to be a lot of fun. So you're going to hear her giggling here and there uh, on the microphone. But if you even have any questions for her, please feel free to give a call in at 410-583-1057. So Tara, today is your uh, Mother's Day. Is that right? Oh, yes. All right. So what was the, the first child we had? What was his name again? Travis. Oh, I thought we were talking about our four-legged friends today. Uh, Bruno, Bruno, <laughs> yes, right. he was my first. He was our, he was our first. Our first uh, first little uh, child of ours was Bruno. Uh, he came to us ten years ago. As you guys remember, I talked about him a little bit uh, last episode, uh, talking about some pet loss and things like that, and uh, how it transitioned. And one of the neat things that Tara and I have experienced, and we get to celebrate today, is is the fact that, you know, what, what our four-legged friends bring to us, you know, it's one of those things that we get to go home and brag about and uh, really enjoy the memories, those fun times, um, even those bad times. I mean, I, I could tell you that I remember uh, a few times coming home from work before I did this stuff uh, more often, and uh, Bruno had uh, chewed a hole in the wall, mm-hmm. and, you know, there's Tara right there trying to hide it for him, you know, what a good mother would do. <laughs> so... Again, so it's it's one of those neat things that a lot of times people get a little set with others thinking that our four legged friends are kids, but from my from my experience, I find that they are, you know. And I haven't met too many women that don't uh, look at their their dogs as their children, and it's not a bad thing, you know. We, we sit there and enjoy them, and we have great memories from them because of the way our dogs just go out of the way and you know give us these fantastic memories of fun emotions and. and you know, good times. So Tara, why don't you tell us a little uh, memory of Bruno you had of, of him when we first got together with him? Well, you know, the one that sticks out in my mind is um, I'm not really that dressy type woman. Um, I'm kind of like a casual sweatpants girl. And I had one pair, just one pair of dress shoes, one pair. And uh, he chewed my one pair up. Wow. Yes. And I, I tell you what, I remember he even uh, chewed up my uh, one pair of boots. I can't even get rid of them anymore just because of how much how special they are. So if you guys want to tell us a little story about your dogs and, and tell us things like that, again, you can give us a call at 410-583-1057. If not, we're going to keep talking about some really good times and good things going on here. So as we get into Mother's Day and celebrations, you know, do we celebrate with our dogs? Do we give them any special treats? Or better yet, do we have? Does anybody out there have a dog that's given birth to have puppies? Where they have puppies as well. Um, so if we, again, we're welcoming everybody, and we hope you get to enjoy your uh, your Mother's Day uh, all the way around. Uh, with that being said, we're just going to go ahead and get into some fun topics. Like one is going to be with is is teaching your dog some focus. Um, so one big thing that we get complaints about a lot is the fact that you know dogs want to pay attention uh, a lot of times outside. 
of their owners. So instead of really following them, key in and, and things like that, they, they tend to want to pull in a leash, want to go towards other dogs, uh, other people. And owners, a lot of times, get really frustrated with that, and it causes uh, a, a lot of stress. And we invest into different items, such as uh, halties, martingales, uh, just just different training techniques, or, or should say systems or tools. I should, correction, it's going to be tools. They invest in a lot of tools, trying to curb that behavior uh, instead of taking a little bit of time and just teaching them, you know, those focuses. So with uh, the company uh, that I work with is Blue Line Canine. So I'm the owner of Blue Line Canine Dog Training. And one of our biggest uh, slogans that we have is, yes, good dog. And the reason why we do that is because what I've found throughout the years is that when you become the number one focus of your dog, that a lot of down behaviors, bad behaviors, any of those behaviors just just disappear. Uh, so what I found every time I, I go out, I look at things and I've learned that I'm willing to follow anybody that has great value. So, you know, and what that value is could be determined by what I'm looking for or what I want. So as a dog trainer, what I've found is that when I take the the time to learn your dog and, and find out what drives your dog, instead of just assuming that it's going to be treats or, or forced behavior or this or that, I actually just take the time to learn my owners. I learn my dogs that I'm working with, and then we just start to slowly but surely find out what the dog's interest is. And once we figure out what that dog's interest is, now the training becomes really simple. Uh, We start gearing in to get the focus on what we need them to be doing and not the other way around. So we don't focus on no's and correction. What we do is we focus on the yeses. So one of the first drills, if you guys remember from last week, if you were uh, listening last week, if not, uh, we'll tell you a little bit about it today. It's called focus recognition. Um, we do it with a name name drill. Uh, so what we do is we'll have your dog on a 15-foot leash, or we recommend that if you're in your home, you just have them off leash, and you want to say the dog's name. And once the dog pays attention to that name, so for example, uh, we're going to say uh, Bruno again. We're going to use Bruno as my analogy, and we're going to say Bruno, and after I say that command, of course, he doesn't know his name at this point in time, or he's not that well known at it. And we're going to just focus on the fact that we need to get his attention. So now I'm going to start whistling, making noise, uh, doing everything but saying any other words. And then once he pays attention, I'm going to scream out, yes, good boy. And that's going to cause him to be so curious about that high level of energy that came out of me that he's going to run over to me and I'm going to be able to pet him, pet him, pet him, pet him, pet him. Now, if your dog's under nine months, they're going to be extremely treat driven because they're going to be looking for nutritional growth. Uh, So with that being said, I'm going to probably put a treat on the floor in between my legs. Uh, So then that way the dog has a treat on the floor, which adds a bonus to what's going on in the drill. And at then I could sit there and when the dog runs over, I could start patting him really, really nice. Now my dog's going to be learning through the Pavlovian connection, right? The building of habits is that when he hears his name, he's going to run back. He's going to get a treat, a magic treat from the floor, of course, because he's not going to see it come from my hands. And then he's going to get petted. And by doing that, I've created this habit that we as humans actually do all the time. I mean, how many times have you heard your name in a store uh, that, the person calling your name, you don't even know them. It just so happens they have a friend or a child with a similar name, and you immediately look to see what was going on. Well, that's what we're trying to do with the dog there. And now, once that is instilled, which takes t- typically takes about 30 days to get it started, uh, so if you do it once a day for about five minutes a day uh, for 30 days, you'll see it completely instilled. The name becomes a four-point drill. It becomes a correction, a direction, a focus, and a recall. So now, instead of me uh, yelling at my dog, no, don't do that, I could just simply say, Bruno, it's going to stop his bad behavior and redirect him back to me. So my correction is actually going to be his name, just as if it was a, a person. You know, for example, my wife is here today, so if you guys have any questions, again, you can give her a call. It's just to confirm my stories at 410-583-1057. You can hear me tell you a little story. Is So the other day, my son is actually upstairs, uh, and he's making a, a racket and a half, and I'm thinking I have three dogs in the house. I have two children. I, I have a wife. I have, you know, guests coming over and things like that. If I just start screaming, no, 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 <laughs> no, eh, 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 eh. who am I actually addressing at that point in time? So then the question comes down to is, all right, now everybody thinks they're wrong. And now 
we we don't have anything done. You know, the house isn't clean because well, I just corrected the person cleaning the house. Uh, items aren't put away because I just I just corrected the person from doing it because we didn't address the problem. So in this case, what I did was I just yelled for my son Travis. So I said Travis, and immediately, what? Thanks, buddy. And that was the end of it. So instead of me telling him what he was doing was wrong and focusing on a negative, which would lower my value in my son's eyes, I stopped the behavior that was going on by just sort of directing him towards me. And that was it. And then I rewarded him by saying thanks just by paying attention to the fact that I called his name. So that's also going to help humans with that. Now, with my dog, it's the same thing. So one of the biggest complaints that we got last episode was jumping on us. And I talked a little bit about the uh, fear of loss by backing away, but we can also go into the name recognition drill, where if you you build this name recognition and you see your dog getting ready to run up on somebody, you could just simply say their name, Bruno, and he's immediately going to look back at you because you just instilled in him that when he hears that name, he comes back to get a, a, a reward. So he gets petted by you, he gets treats by you. And when we think about why is the dog jumping? Well, the dog's jumping nine out of 10 times because he's just excited to see somebody. And when they learn to see somebody, they get petted. Not always on purpose either. Sometimes they jump up on people and people push them off of them. They grab their paws and place them down on the ground because they don't want to push the dog. They don't want to hurt the dog. So there's a lot of human affection that's going on in that, that event that causes our dogs to be hesitant, right? Or, or I'm sorry, not hesitant, but... Uh, excited about that uh, event and hesitant to listen to the direction of get down, get off, because now you're becoming correction, right? So I always look at it, things like this is that when you tell me no, uh, the only thing I heard was that you're just not going to hang out with me and do it. Uh, you never really actually told me I can't do it. You just told me that you're not going to be a part of the event. So then I take that mentality and I put it with my dog and I, I compare it to the same. You know, it, it is the same in my opinion. So if I make my dog follow me and have nothing but fun and show him how to get everything he wants, which is he wants my affection. He wants other people's affections. So all we have to do is show him how to get it. And you're going to see your dog's going to repeat, 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 repeat. So that's the really nice part about, you know, this type of a drill, because it just makes your dog love you even more. And the more you practice it, the more you drill it into the dog, the more the dog's going to be paying attention to you, which is going to be getting rid of the the dog that wants to run away, the dog that wants to chase squirrels, the dogs that want to pull in the leash, the dogs that want to mark on everything. Because the way your dog's seeing it is, hey, every time I'm around dad, dad just loves me. Every time mom's around, she loves me. It's just nothing but loves and kisses and happiness and all this joy that's coming out of it. And, and that's what's going to push them into wanting to drive and be around you. Which then when you start getting into the other type of commands, such as sit, down, place, uh, heal, those commands actually fall a lot easier. So I'm sure uh, if you're a dog owner, you've seen those videos where the dogs are looking right up at the owners and they're paying lots of attention to them. Um, you know, that's how this sort of starts. You know, you build that focus up, you start building that drive. And as that dog is partaking to you and you're having nothing but fun with the dog, you're just going to see that your relationship gets uncandid. A lot of problem behaviors just completely disappear. So again, if you if you guys even have any problem behaviors that you might want to know or see if they connect to it, you can give us a call here at 410-583-1057. Uh, you can also check us out on Facebook Live at Michael J. Solar Dog Talk. If you have any dog related questions, you can check out uh, my company at Blue Line K9 Dog Training on Facebook, or you can check us out online at bluelinek9.com. Uh, either way, you can get a hold of us. We can get you those answers that you're looking for. All right, so let's uh, continue on today uh, with some plans. So, one of the, the things that we look at is, uh, again, going back in the last episode, is uh, pet loss. So, one of the things that I know today is Mother's Day, we don't want to go into any of these sad things, but we talked a little bit about last week is about pet loss and things like that. And one of the, the things I've been researching is uh, pet insurance. So a lot of times we, we come to a point uh, in time with our dogs where they're getting sick or ill and we just come across the point that we, we can't financially handle the veterinarian bills or, or things like that, trying to keep them healthy or alive. So I started researching on pet insurance, and I and I will make an entire episode about that. But I just want to, you know, get on that and tell you a little bit about it. Which 
With pet insurance, uh, it seems like it's a really good deal. Uh, as I continue to research it, I mean, health care for us is is crucial, so I don't see why health care for your dog would not be. Um, there's a lot of different things you can get into. So, for example, eating eating healthier or feeding your dog healthier foods is a good idea. Uh, so a lot of times people ask us about, you know, diets, uh, what, what food brand is really good and, and things like that. And I will tell you, I'm still doing a lot of research. Uh, sometimes when I found a good brand of food, I went out there, started switching to it. Next thing you know, there was a recall on it. Uh, the company got bought out by a bigger company and, and things like that. So there's this constant uh, review on dog foods that are that is occurring that you have to really pay attention to. You know, is it low grain, high grain? more protein, less protein? Is it um, duck versus turkey versus chicken, beef, uh, venison versus duck? Uh, Well, the thing is, is that the one thing I found is that when you stick to a diet, you know, and you you have to let the dog sort of figure that out if it's going to be good for them. Um, I'm hoping to find a pet nutritionist and have them on the show that we could talk a little bit more and have our callers ask questions in reference to dog foods. So I'm not going to get a whole lot of commitment uh, today. I'm not going to push a whole lot of different products or anything like that today just because I don't really know a whole lot about the nutrition because it's constantly changing. Um, When you're looking at pet nutrition as a whole, uh, it's very similar to humans. I mean, it's, it's a constant battle that's going out there that, you know, uh, when you get a puppy, they're 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 pushed with all these different vaccines. Then you get the different foods, and then you have different stresses and and things like that. You know, uh, you have the raw diet versus the high protein diet versus the, you know, what's the difference between the cheap food and the most expensive food versus the treats versus no treats versus healthy treats versus you know, dry treats versus raw hides, you know, there's just so many things. I mean, I don't know about you guys, but I've gone into pet stores and I've seen uh, rows upon rows of dog bones. And then you're sitting there going, okay, well, that's wonderful. So which one's good for my dog? And if it's in the pet store, why are they selling something that's no good for your pet? Well, a lot of times the pet stores don't even know what's no good for your pet or not good for your pet or good for your pet. They just look at it saying, Hey, we need to carry this stuff because people are buying it. Um, And certain things are good for one dog, but they're not good for another. Uh, For example, uh, deer antlers or the elk antlers that are really popular right now for dog chewers. Um, If you ever go to the store, you'll notice there's a whole shelf dedicated to different size antlers. So you have some cut in half, some that are little, some that are big, some are uh, fully, you know, some are cut in half, like cut right down the center so you could see the marrow really quicker. Uh, and, and you'll go in there and you'll just buy one. And you're not even paying a whole lot of attention to it. And what you don't realize is that it's not necessarily the size that's going to make a difference to your dog, but it's the the key to it. So, for example, if you have a shepherd um, or a Labrador, they're going to want the ones that are split straight down the center so they can have access to the marrow. Uh, they're not Abbott chewers, so they are chewers. So they do like to grind on those things to clean their teeth and stuff. But their most important thing is going to be the marrow. So if they can't get to the marrow, they're going to lose uh, a lot of interest in a deer antler. Where if you have a bully breed, you know, a terrier or something like that, you're going to want the, the full-fledged antler. You're going to want the one that's completely encased. It's essentially intact, looks just like it came off the, uh, the deer itself. And that's the one they're going to want because the, the type of dog that they are, they're truly going to go at that deer antler and grind it down to get what they want out of it. So knowing your dog is going to be a key essential to picking out these types of products. Um, When you get into deer antlers, even toys, Uh, toys are one of the, another big thing that I don't know about you, but we spend a lot of money on dog toys. Um, The amount of toys that you can spend, (laughs) I mean, it's absolutely endless and then the funniest thing about it is we sit there and go, I don't know why the dog's chewing my shoes instead of the toy. I spent thousands of dollars on all these dog toys from the store and boom, there goes my shoe. <laughs> as, as my wife said earlier, she had this one outfit. Next thing you know, that outfit was gone. I had a pair of boots and that pair of boots uh, became uh, became a chew toy. And then I'm sitting here going, w- w- I don't understand this. Why did this occur? Well, what's really neat is if you start looking at your toys, um, there's a couple things. One, we tend to leave our toys down for the dogs to play with, and the dogs lose interest, and you lose interest. So the toys are sitting there, the dog's sitting there, and the dog's looking at you saying, I really want you to play with me. Well, if I pick up the toy, you don't play with me. 
I go pick up that shoe. Man, you're up and running and yelling and screaming and chasing. It's fantastic. Well worth it. Let's keep doing that. And then we think, well, if we yell at the dog, that's going to make a difference. And the truth be told is dogs don't speak English, Spanish, or any other language that we think that we speak. So they're not going to get it. What they're going to get is the fact that mom and dad got off the couch. Mom and dad chased them around the house. Mom and dad showed them lots of attention during that time period. So I guess eating the shoe makes a lot of sense. Chewing on your favorite outfit makes a lot of sense. And that's what the dog is learning from that whole event. So what you want to do with your toys, and this is also going to save you a lot of money in the long run, is maybe get a little box. Uh, I've been to a couple of houses where they, they have the box located uh, someplace in a different room, and it, and it says dog's toys, it has their name on it, something like that. But you don't really want to give them complete access to it. What you want to do is put your all your toys in there that belong to the dog, and you want to give them out uh, in segments. So then that way the dog has high value for the tr- for the toys, and they can have different things. Now that what you want to do as well is leave one toy down on the ground at all times for um, stress relief or anxiety. So if you have a dog suffering from any type of anxiety, they're going to want something that they can put in their mouth. It could be a Kong. It could be a dog bone. Your dog is going to be the one that sort of chooses that. They're going to know um, what the outfit is that they're going to be looking for. We've been on a break, haven't we? Looking for a great relationship between you and your dog? Want to control your dog under any distraction while maintaining that happy puppy personality? Blue Line Canine Dog Training and Rehabilitation has 10 years of service that guarantees results with effective dog training made fun and easy. Customized packages to the needs of their clients, such as puppy training, off-leash obedience, behavior rehabilitation, and much more. Blue Line Canine Dog Training and Rehabilitation offers group classes at a public location or private home training. If you can't make it to them, they can make it to you. Call them at 1-800-266-2365 or check them out online at blk9.com for the current group class schedules and to book your appointment. That's blk9.com. Blue Line Canine. They believe in the power of yes. Credit drop. Recent 520. It's hard to know what's up with your identity if you only get part of the story. Of course, transactions, problem, account closure. That's what happens when you rely on monitoring your credit to protect you from identity theft. Charges, Vegas, Tuesday. You might detect credit changes, but you can miss threats like a cell phone account or new loan in your name, or that your personal info is for sale on the dark web. In particular, red flag, bad. Why not get a more complete story to help protect your identity? At LifeLock, we detect a range of identity threats. And if you have a problem, one of our U.S.-based specialists will work to fix it. No one can prevent all identity theft or monitor all transactions at all businesses. But LifeLock gives you more than you'll get from just monitoring your credit. Memberships start at $9.99 a month plus applicable taxes. Join now for 10% off. Go to LifeLock.com and enter promo code LifeLock. That's promo code LifeLock. LifeLock. More detection, more protection. If there's one thing the pros at Advance Auto know, it's parts. Advance Auto Parts and Batteries. I'm on your website and it says I can buy online and then pick up in store? Yes. And how long does that usually take? 30 minutes or less. I need a battery for my 2013 Ford Escape. Our Autocraft Gold, it's got a three-year warranty. Man, you really know your stuff. I'm 33. Am I too young for a cardigan? Too young for a cardigan. (laughs) Advance Auto Parts. We know everything about auto parts. Order online at advanceautoparts.com and pick up your order in store in just 30 minutes, also at participating CarQuest stores. Our homes are filled with smart technology. But what about the technology that protects our homes and families? Shouldn't it be just as smart? Welcome to Xfinity Home, a total home security solution. Get advanced technology with real-time alerts, live video, and remote access. Control security features through your TV with the Xfinity X1 voice remote. Show Xfinity Home cameras. And enjoy advanced peace of mind from our award-winning monitoring station that provides 24-7 professional monitoring with fast response time. This is James from Xfinity Home. Xfinity Home. Connected. Protected. Home. 
Add Xfinity Home from the fastest growing home security provider for just $24.99 per month for two full years and get free installation. Call 1-800-XFINITY, go to Xfinity.com slash home security or visit a store today. Offer in 62117. Restrictions apply. New secure customers only. Two-year agreement required. Non-standard installation, equipment, and taxes extra. Now is the time to start your garden this weekend at Glendon Gardens in Reisterstown. Glendon Gardens has it all and everything's blooming. Talk to one of their experts and give your home more curb appeal. This weekend, celebrate mom with their special open house. It's all happening this weekend at Glendon Gardens. Hi, this is Simone Biles. When kids believe in themselves, it's amazing what they can accomplish. I believe I could be a pilot. I believe I can be a professor. A doctor. A poet. I believed I could be a gold medalist. And thanks to the love and support from my parents who adopted me when I was a foster kid, I was able to reach my dreams. There are 400,000 foster kids in the U.S., many of whom have outgrown their old clothes. That's why Mattress Firm Foster Kids, a program of the Ticket to Dream Foundation, is collecting new clothes. With your donation, you can help foster kids in your community look and feel their best. To learn more or donate, visit mattressfirmfosterkids.org today. I believe I could be anything. Come to any Mattress Firm store today and donate clothes to help a foster child in your community. Not everyone can be a foster parent, but anyone can help a foster child. Spring is here, and we're guessing your grilling game could use a little upgrading. Glendon Gardens has all of the top brands in outdoor cooking to turn you into a cookout master. Not sure what system is best for you? Talk to Glendon Gardens grilling expert about their big green egg, Traeger pellet wood fire grill, and Saber gas grills. They have a huge variety of cooking accessories and seasonings. Don't forget the rest of their outdoor area. Glendon Gardens is your one-stop shop for shrubs, trees, flowers, outdoor entertainment, and lawn accessories. Visit Glendon Gardens today to get your home spring and summer ready welcome back to dog talk with michael j solar from blue line canine training and rehabilitation heard every sunday morning from seven to eight providing valuable education on dog behavior and training once again here's michael j solar with dog talk on 1057 the fan Hey guys, and welcome back. Uh, Michael J. Solar here again with Dog Talk, and uh, we have some uh, good stuff that we're going over in a break. My wife had brought up a really good point, which is going to be picking out expensive toys versus cheap toys versus no toys and things like that. So as a little quick thing that we went over, uh, to what I was going over before, and I think I went on a little bit of a speaking tangent, which is just simply this, is you want to have toys for everything that the dog is doing. So the dog is relating those fun, energetic moments and things like that to those specific toys and having that type of fun, which means the dog's not going to want to be chewing on your stuff, including your shoes and clothing and couches and dining room table chairs and things like that. You have to make sure that your dog's going through certain stages and you have the right toys to be picking from. So picking those right toys, I mean, how many times have you gone to the pet store and bought something that was $20, $30, $40? And then you bring it home and the dog's, hey, I like your socks better. And then you're like, why did I bother buying this toy? Well, my, my wife brought up a really good point, which is really, really funny uh, when you really think about it. And it happens all the time. And on Mother's Day, I think it's a really good idea to bring this up. Uh, one of which with our kids uh, is no matter what toy we get them, uh, the bigger the box, the happier they are. It has nothing to do with what's inside the box. It just has to do with the box. So uh, she's laughing at me now instead of just saying that she agrees or that it is true on the radio. I don't know why she's a little nervous to talk into the microphone. I agree. I there, agree. There yes, you go. There you go. <laughs> uh, so one of the neat things is is that uh, you look at things like that and you're like, oh, my God, I should have just bought the kid a box and just called it a day. I mean, how many people have ever made that comment uh, in reference to those things? And the truth be told is that the box just creates an imagination, an imagination for our kids. And that's what... When they get into our dog training, uh, it's the same thing. So our dog's looking at the toy, and they figure out what they what it, what can make them more happy. Is it going to be getting mom and dad to interact with them? Is it going to be pretending that they just went on this long journey and hunted down that squeaky toy and got to put it out of its misery, I guess? Um, and that's what the toys are going to represent. So you're going to have some toys for stress relief or anxiety, maybe a toy for chewing, Um interaction toys, uh, fetch toys. I mean, there's just so many different things that you can get into. And one of the neat things is, uh, again, uh, playing, playing with your dog can also create 
uh, a level of stress for you as well, just just like anything else. Um, so what we do in Blue Line Canine is we recommend that we you do two toys identical, okay? Uh, that way when you're ready for the dog to uh, give the toy up, you actually can teach the dog to let go as an exchange program. So you exchange, exchange, exchange throughout the game. So that allows the dog to win and choose to let go of the item in order to get the newer item. And then when the game is over, uh, you could just simply pick up the second toy. Uh, so you'll have both toys and you can put them away in your box. And by leaving the dog really excited and seeing that they're being put in the box, the dog's going to learn how to be on their best behavior in order for you to go get in the box to get the toys out. Uh, the other thing that we look at too is going to be is creating habits for the dog. So for example, we all have busy lives and busy schedules and stuff like that. And the thing is that your dog only has you. So your dog's busy life and busy schedule it revolves around you. So when you might be going to work and you might have your friends and you have all these different things that you want to do, remember your dog's sitting home waiting for you to come home and hang out with them. So if you learn to maybe set a specific time every day uh, and dedicate that to your dog to go and play fetch with them, play hide and seek with them, uh, play tug of war with them, play anything with them, even just, you know, hang out and do some tricks, you know, sit down, come roll over, things like that with them. That specific one on one attention with them is going to be leaps and bounds of focus and distress for your dog, lowering anxiety, building focus, building control. Because your dog's going to look forward to it. So instead of your dog chewing on your furniture and things like that and, and wanting to destroy your clothing or your shoes or any of your own personal stuff, the dog's going to sit there and say, don't worry about it. Mom comes home at 3 o'clock and then we go in the backyard. I go tinkle and boom, we start playing fetch. It's fantastic. So now your dog's going to be sitting there saying, all right, I'm going to wait and I'm going to wait. And then boom, 3 o'clock comes and they're going to hear the door chime come in and your keys jiggling, unlocking the door. You're going to come in and you're going to be greeted with a yeah. Boy, and all this good fun and all this high energy and high drive and high this and high that and boom you go outside you start playing time and attention with the dog that gets that out of the way gets the dog's uh, anxiety lowered it gets their energy taken out and you can now go in and and get your evening on you can go start cooking dinner if you need to cook dinner uh, take care of your kids if you need to take care of your kids you can do anything it just takes you five to ten minutes if you do you know you go home and you just focus on that little bit and you're going to eliminate all these negative behaviors that your dog's going to be doing instead of just going outside and playing with them um, I mean most of the time most ba bad behaviors are coming just from the lack of direct attention that we give our dogs I mean we come across some people saying oh I got another dog for their attention and what we don't realize is that you know, dogs got the nickname of, uh, you know, man's best friend, uh, not for hanging out with other dogs. They got it because they look for the human affection. They, they look for us to be a part of their lives. They look for us to be their leaders. They look for us to do those things. So if you have multiple dogs like I do, you have to give them individual time and attention. You can't just assume that they're going to get that attention, um, from hanging out with their other sibling dogs or, or things like that. And when you have other people in the house, they also have to give the dogs that individual time and attention to build that relationship, build the focus and have that time, uh, to, to find out who their owners are and, and what the rules and of the house are going to be, what they can get away with. Can they chew you, chew on you? Can they bite you, nip you? Can they rip your clothing? What, what is allowed? What is not allowed? You know, uh, who's, who's in charge? Who, who do I have to heal with? Who do I have to sit around? Who do I get to choose and play these things, right? So that's the kind of stuff that you want to look at. And again, you can also use toys. So you have what I like to call leave me alone toy. Uh, so in my house, a leave me alone toy is a Kong. Uh, the reason why they're, I use a Kong is because they're odd shaped and due to their odd shape, they, the dog, every time they let it out of their mouth sort of bounces randomly. So the dog can actually sort of chew on it by themselves. They don't really need me to... Uh, throw it or anything like that. Now, with that being said, my rule, again, why I call it a leave me alone toy is because there's going to be zero to interaction with me and that toy. That's going to be for them to chew on. It's going to be for them to play with by themselves. That's not going to be for me to play tug of war, me to throw around, nothing of that sort. Um, and the reason for that is because um, if I need to get some work done, um, I'm right now writing a, a book uh, so we're writing our third book, which is going to be about housebreaking. Uh, we have our second book coming out here shortly on socialization. And so if we have some little bit of time that I need to sit here and focus and I have these three dogs that are looking for me to play, I might give them their Kong. Now they can leave me alone. 
Uh, and then from there, uh, we can sit there and focus on what we need to. And then about 45 minutes later, I'd go over, I'll take that toy away and give my dog direct uh, inter- interaction. So then I could go outside uh, and then I have uh, two, two uh, balls that I use a chuck it with. So what I do is I stand midfield and I'll throw one one direction. And as the dog's coming back at full momentum, I present the second toy and I throw once they release the first toy, I'll throw it the opposite way. So then that way when my dog gets nice and tired, my dog ends at me and we get to have a, a good time and there's no uh, negatives to it. And that's the really neat thing about it. Now, again, we, I want to go back to what my wife brought up is about my kids playing with boxes and stuff like that, which is going to be about choosing the right toy. And is the price tag going to help you figure that out? Well, I'm going to tell you that the price tag sometimes is going to be expensive to get that right toy, but sometimes it's not going to be. Uh, so what I found with with dogs is that lacrosse balls are one of the best balls to play with with your dog. One, they're very thick rubber, so the dogs um, cannot just rip them apart uh, with their mouth. So they're very durable in that aspect. You can get some good distance when throwing them. You can buy a lacrosse stick to help you as a chuck it. Chuck it's, they fit in chuck it's as well, so chuck it's, uh can throw them as well. So you have a lacrosse stick you can get. You have a chuck it that you can get that will help you project the ball to get the dog the distance to run if you have a, if you have a larger dog this is definitely a, a good choice now a set of a couple of lacrosse balls at a sporting goods store is probably going to be a little bit cheaper than going and buying very expensive um, balls at the uh, pet store and what it is it's just a, it's just a markup it's just the type of product so a lot of times there there's a bigger market in sports how many people are buying lacrosse balls how many teams are buying them in hundreds and the, the, the item itself is just going to be cheaper for that point where with the dogs, I mean, how often, I mean, there's so many different dog toys. Half the time the store doesn't even know which one's selling. It could be random. I mean, if you have an influence of German shepherds, uh, that week because of litters in the nearby area, they might be selling a lot more chew toys and that's what they're going to be focusing on instead of the opposite way. So again, you know, the price tag can change if you're, lo- if you're willing to look into the de- uh, into the different aspects of it and, and see that they all sort of work together. So like I said, a lacrosse ball, you're going to buy at a sporting goods store, not a pet store, but it's going to get you a longevity. And again, if you put those away, your dog's not going to ruin them. They're going to last forever. They really do. I mean, I still have one that's 10 years old uh, from playing with my dogs. It, it's amazing how long it lasted because of the fact that I just don't let them avidly chew on it. Now, because of the Kongs, uh, Kongs are color-coded. So Bright colors are typically for soft chewers. Red is the medium chewers, and black is your Abbott chewers, so your thicker ones, right? So the black Kongs, uh, for my dogs in particular, for the leave me alone time, are the ones that we we choose and use, and they last a good bit. So that it's a lot of fun to give them to them, but at the same point in time, I know that about every three to six months, I'm probably going to be wind up buying another one. Uh, they do are uh, they are capable of wearing out the tops of them and chewing off the the top of the uh, the Kong. So I already know and I and I plan for that. It's not a toy that's going to last forever. Um, dog bones again, same thing that you know you're not going to last forever. So you need to start you know a little bit of a budget for that kind of stuff and start putting them away the the money for it. So that way you can get in there and start figuring out how and how how often you're going to be buying it, how much money is it going to be. So that way you don't you're not losing your shoes. You know, I always say that a pair of shoes is going to on average cost you around fifty to a hundred dollars, where that Kong is going to cost you you know fifteen to twenty five. I'd rather buy that Kong than lose my shoes. Uh, even if it's every couple of months, it's still a better investment than losing that pair of shoes because, um, I mean, my shoes last a good bit, but. Even still, if I need to replace them right away, that's a lot more money. Uh, and for me, I wear uh, boots. So on average, my boots are costing anywhere between 150 to $200. Well, a $25 Kong for my dog is going to be 10 times cheaper than a new pair of boots. So that's uh, what I would do is just go that realm. Uh, with your fetch toys, again, there's many different ways of doing it. I like lacrosse balls. I like rubber balls uh, that are going to help with that because, one, the, the saliva, you can easily wipe them off. Uh, you, I just bring a little rag with me every time I take my dogs out. So that way when they're all done, I just wipe them off. They don't start to smell. They don't feel disgusting afterwards. They last a while. Um, and that's a good way of doing that as well. Now, a lot of people are using tennis balls. Uh, well, we I've, I've read a study, and I'd have to find the study again, and I would love to post it on my Facebook page, which is uh, Blue Line Canine Dog Training. Or you can uh, also follow us on Facebook at Michael J. Solar Dog Talk. And 
what I, I want to put the study out there because what the study showed was that tennis balls have a wax coating on them and that wax coating actually starts to eat the enamel of dog's teeth. So when you use tennis balls for a while with your dogs, you're actually eating the enamel right off of their teeth because the saliva and the wax coating just starts to, I guess, like a chemical reaction starts doing this. It was really a, a great article. And ever since I read it, I just stopped doing it. And um, it's been a few years. It's uh, Actually, I read it probably before I started this, uh, the endeavor of starting the Blue Line Canine. So it's it's been a long time since I hit it. But I will find it and I will post it on our Facebook feeds. Again, that's uh, Michael J. Solar uh, Dog Talk and Blue Line Canine Dog Training. That way you can go ahead and you can read those articles when I get them posted on there. So that way you can see what we're talking about with it. But if you're going to use tennis balls, what the article stated to do is that you just soak them in water for about 20 minutes. And what it does is it pulls off the enamel, I mean uh, the uh, wax off the ball. So then that way it doesn't ruin the dog's teeth on, on anything. Now... The other thing to be mindful of, because when I've told people in the past about it, and I told them I wasn't 100% sure, again, I haven't read the article in a long time. It's just something I started doing after reading it. Uh, I just took it for granted. Uh, but I will find that article again, do a little bit more research and give it to you guys uh, and put it out there that you know you can see what I was talking about with the study and everything. Um, but it also talks about toys that are purchased at pet stores. So one of the things that the article stated, uh, if I remember correctly, had to do with basically if it has like a real nice shine to it uh, on the on the, the felt material, that, so like a tennis ball material, um, that has a wax coating. That wax coating is what's giving it the shine, and that's what's going to eat away the enamel on the, uh, on the dog's teeth. So you want to be cautious with that kind of stuff and make sure that, you know, you're using it properly. You're not hurting the dog in the long run, right? So... Uh, the other thing you can get into is probably going to be brushing your dog's teeth. So they have little dental chews and things like that. And now um, a lot of veterinarians are offering uh, to brush dog's teeth when they come in for a visit. Which, by the way, if you are a veterinarian in the area and you would like to uh, come on the show and give us some healthy tips or uh, talk about dental or anything um, related, please uh, feel free. You can, you can again, find me at Michael J. Solar Dog Talk, Blue Line Canine Dog Training. We'd love to have you on the show. We'd love to interview you uh, and give you, give you the opportunity to provide our clients and awesome tips and stuff like that. So guys, listen, we're going to be getting ready to be taking a nice uh, commercial break here and we'll get back with more uh, information here on Dog Talk. Blue Line Canine Dog Training can provide solutions to your dog's more challenging issues. They can help with dogs who are afraid to be home alone. Aggressive dogs, dogs with thunder phobia, and excessively fearful dogs. Call them at 1-800-266-2365 or check them out at blk9.com for the current group class schedules and to book your appointment. That's blk9.com. Blue Line Canine. They believe in the power of yes. Even though we got lucky this winter, your roof is another year older. Now is the perfect time as the spring rains begin to make sure your home is protected. Come on, you know how the transition can be from winter to spring. Call my friends at Phil DiBella Roofing. Family owned and operated since 1979, Phil DiBella is the name you've come to trust with over 75,000 satisfied customers. They follow a simple rule. Be honest with the customer and treat the customer's home like it's their own. And when you call Phil DiBella Roofing, you're working with an actual roofer, not a salesman. You get great work for an honest price, and Phil DiBella Roofs are installed by their own trained, certified, and courteous employees. The Phil DiBella family stands with all their work. They have the best warranties in the market. Angie's a super service award winner and an A-plus rating with the Better Business Bureau. So call Phil DiBella today at 410-752-ROOF, and right now you get $1,000 off a new roof and 1500 off whole house siding. Come on, do yourself a favor. Call Phil DiBella today and let their family take care of yours by calling 410 410- 752 roof. That's 410 752 7663. Do it now. Deal with that roof today. It's Mattress Firm's Memorial Day sale, where we guarantee you'll love your mattress with a 120-night money-back guarantee. And you'll love Mattress Firm's savings, too. Save up to $1,000 store-wide on the latest sleep technology from Beautyrest, Serta, and others. Plus, save up to $400 on select adjustable bases and get up to two free pillows only during Mattress Firm's Memorial Day sale. For offer details, visit mattressfirm.com slash circulars. Product offers and prices may vary in Hawaii and Alaska. For over 80 years, Navy Federal Credit Union members have been sharing stories about their experience with their friends and families. Stories like Ben's. Navy Federal Credit Union helped me turn my dream car into my first car. When I was 19 and I first arrived at my duty station, I figured out really quickly that I needed a vehicle. 
I passed by this dealership and I saw my dream car. It was love at first sight. When I walked into Navy Federal, they taught me everything I needed to know. They made it very easy for me to get all my paperwork ready for my car loan. They made my dream come true. I became an owner of that car. I'm very excited to say that Navy Federal helped me out in achieving my dream. Helping members like Ben is one reason Forrester Research ranked Navy Federal Credit Union number one in customer experience for full service banking. To see if you're eligible to join America's largest credit union, visit NavyFederal.org today. Navy Federal Credit Union. Open to the armed forces, the DOD, veterans, and their families. Federally insured by NCUA. Member compensated for his time. Number one ranking from Forrester's Customer Experience Index 2016. Jeremy Khan here to tell you about Sport Clips. Guys, if you're looking to get a haircut, go to the best place you possibly can. It's the place I go and my boys go. That's Sport Clips. Get that MVP haircut experience they have. You'll get a great haircut every time. Absolutely guaranteed. They use massaging shampoo and invigorating scalp massage. They use that tea tree shampoo to make sure you're feeling good. And you'll get that legendary hot steam towel, just like a modern barber shop. Feels so good when they put that hot steam towel right on your face. It's a man break, not just a haircut. They have guys, smart stylists, and there's large flat screen TVs playing sports all the time, everywhere. In the lobby, the cutting stations, you're not going to miss out on that day's sports action at all. There's no appointments needed, and walk-ins are always welcome. They're open every day. Massaging chairs in the shampoo area, so you're feeling good, and they feature the latest hair care and styling products for men and boys. So make sure you visit your favorite Sport Clips today and tell them Jeremy sent you. Sport Clips is over 1,600 locations nationwide wide so you know there's one right near you visit sportclips.com to find that one near you check it out sport clips it's good to be a guy be a part of the budweiser infield fest at the preakness saturday may 20th witness first class thoroughbred racing and music's hottest artists as they take to the world stage at historic pimlico the day-long eclectic music festival features country superstar sam hunt with special guest zed plus good charlotte low cash and high valley don't miss this epic event baltimore's time-honored tradition and the mid-atlantic's hottest party it's preakness the people's race the people's party visit preakness.com for tickets today this is bob haney and springtime is the perfect time to complete that roofing project at land Mark Roofing. They're having a blowout springtime sale. Family owned and operated Artie, Rob, and Shannon will take special care of every step of your roofing project. They offer top of the line materials that include a 50 year warranty. Mention my name, Bob Haney, and they'll give you not $500, but $1,000 off your roofing project with 12 months, no interest, no payments. Call them at 443-223-7453 or check them out at roofingbylandmark.com. Window sale sounds good, but the biggest window sale of the year sounds better. Thompson Creek Window Company is taking 25% off every window during the biggest sale of the year for a limited time. This is Scott Garceau, and here's what you need to know. Design, build, and install Thompson Creek is the one company that does it all. There's no better time to buy windows for your home. Call 855-57-CREEK right now to take advantage of the lowest prices of the year. Home sweet home, sweet Thompson Creek. Making your life with your best friend the best it can be. This is Dog Talk with Michael J. Soler from Blue Line K9 Training and Rehabilitation. Heard every Sunday morning from 7 to 8. He's got the answers to your questions about your dog's education and training. Now, here's Michael J. Soler and Dog Talk on 1057 The Fan. Hey guys, and welcome back from that, that uh, commercial break. Again, you're on Dog Talk with Michael J. Solar on 105.7. If you have any questions, please feel free to give us a call at 410-583-1057. You could follow me on Facebook at Michael J. Solar Dog Talk and at Blue Line Canine Dog Training. And you can also check us out on the web at BlueLineCanine.com. So hey guys, now that we're back from it, we had a couple of questions come across the uh, Facebook live feed. Uh, one is, do I put peanut butter in the Kong? Uh, to I, I'm assuming that you're doing that to try to keep the dog in, in, interested and things like that. And the answer is going to be no. Um, I do not recommend putting anything, uh, peanut butter, Kong filler, anything like that in the Kong. And, and the reason why is because your dog is incapable of getting everything out. So unless you're trying to buy a scrub brush and clean it every time that they're done using it, uh, you're actually going to open your dog up to possibly getting sick or uh, somebody else in the house getting sick because you're figuring the some of the peanut butter is going to be left inside the uh, the Kong, which is now open to picking up dust molecules or creating bugs in the house, anything like that. So it's not going to be in your best interest to do that, and you're going to wind up getting rid of your Kongs quicker. Um, it's like anything else. when you If you have something like that that's going to be open but 
slightly sealed, it's definitely not going to be in your best interest to do something like that. Uh, if you're looking to do a Kong filler to get your dog interested in the Kong or just to keep their, their mind occupied on it, what you can do is you take their dog food and you fill the Kong up with the dry dog food. That way, all the food's going to come out when it's all said and done. Uh, but and there's going to be nothing really left in there. And then I would also suggest that you still rinse that out and let it dry before you just uh, reuse it or something like that. And then what you do in order to keep the dog food in it is that you could take uh, a little bit of peanut butter and just sort of cake the outside of it. So then that way the dog's licking and making sure you're getting all the peanut butter off of it. Now, there's so many different other uh, options out there, which... Peanut butter is not always the, the number one choice. You can also look into almond butter. Uh, you can look into uh, Kong fillers, uh, things like that. So you, there's many different ways of, of keeping the dry food in there. But honestly, I mean, once the dog gets a little bit older, it's not as important. Uh, they do have puzzle games and things like that that you can get into um, if you're looking to get your dog food through playing with the Kong, but a lot of times the dogs are just naturally excited over the fact that the Kong's going to be bouncing around. But I do not recommend... Uh, putting any type of peanut butter or filler, uh, anything that's going to essentially stick in the inside of the Kong due to the fact that it's going to, the dog is not capable of getting it out. All right. One of the other questions that came in was, how do you keep the dog calm uh, at the vet? Uh, that's an excellent question. I mean, that, that comes up more often than not. I don't even know why I didn't even think of that myself. Um, and let's think about the why first. Why why do our dogs get excited when they go to the vet? Well, let's think about it. From the moment you brought your dog home, the only time they ever went to the vet was to get a, a needle uh, in their back or butt, right? So I don't know about you guys, but I'm not super excited about going to the doctor and, and getting a needle put in or anything like that or even a dentist. And remember, dogs learn through photos. So they're learning that's still imagery. You know, they're, they're every time they get in a car and you bring them to the vet office, they know what's about to happen. It's not a pleasant experience. They go in there, the vet has to get certain things done. So they have the vet techs come in there and they hold the dog. And now the dog's being held in an uncomfortable spot and an uncomfortable table and an uncomfortable, unfamiliar environment. And the vet comes in and the vet checks them out and pokes and progs and does everything they have to do to make sure your dog's in good health. Um, but for your dog, that's a, a scary experience. It's not going to be the, the most fun thing in the world. So there is ways of of getting that done. And it does take a little bit of time, but what you want to do is you want to go to the veterinarian office, just go for a ride. Uh, one, you want to get your dog used to going for car rides, going to fun places, take them to a park, take them places outside of the veterinarian office. So then that way your dog likes going for the car ride. That's step one. The step two is going to be bring your dog to the veterinarian office, get out, wait five seconds, get back in the car and go home. Don't, don't worry about getting in the office. The next time you walk in the lobby, walk back out and leave. And you do that once a month or once every couple of weeks, something like that. And that way the dog starts to relate that, hey, every time we come here, it's not about that that horrible experience. You know, have, have your veterinarian, um, have the vet techs or receptionists or um, nurses there to the, give them dog treats or pet the dog um, when you're going there for a non-appointment. A lot of veterinarians understand what's going on with the dogs and they have no problem helping train the dog out of that that moment of stress because it, it works for them too. I mean, if they don't have to worry about your dog being anxious, that means they don't have to worry about your dog being uh, a bite risk, which means there's going to be no muzzle. There's less control. They don't have to hold your dog as much. Uh, they don't want to grasp your dog any more than you want them to. You know, you don't, they don't want to necessarily put your dog in a, a, a hold so they can get the needles in to, to fear the dog. They're doing that for the everyone's safety, for their safety, your dog's safety, so your dog doesn't get hurt by, you know, falling off the table or anything like that. But if you can get your dog into the veterinarian, and, and I know all the vets that I'm friends with, they have no problem whatsoever uh, having you bring your dog into the veterinarian office and have the staff give the dog reward, pet the dog, have a good time with the dog, and and then you leave because they know the long term the long term result is going to be in their favor. You know that means they don't have to worry about as much. They don't have as much stress either. You know they're just the the veterinarians are just as stressed and nervous as your dog is at that point in time because you know, heck, you know, who really wants to get nipped or bit by a dog, right? So they're thinking about that as the same, as the same token. Um, so we have to take that into consideration when we're doing things is that, remember, we're teaching a lot of behavior. So if our dog is getting stressed out, the question is why, why are they getting stressed out? What do we do? What do we make it fun? Do you remember earlier in, the, in the, today's show, we talked about having fun with your dog and not saying no, 
right? So if you have a good experience, you're going to tend to repeat, 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 repeat. So and that's the key thing here. Like, remember, um, I love Disney World because of the fact that every time I've been to Disney World, I've absolutely had the greatest time in my life. I can't get enough of it. I love Disney movies. I love everything about Disney because Disney knows how to make me have a good time. Now, even though I've gone there and I've waited on lines for 45 minutes to two hours, man, when I got off that ride, that wait was probably worth it for me. Uh, the shows were fantastic. The event was great. Now I get to take my kids and my wife there. Uh, Disney is a, I'm a major fan of Walt Disney. And uh, last year, actually it was two years ago, we went to Disneyland. Yeah, two years ago. Yeah, two years ago we went to Disneyland. Uh, my my brother and sister-in-law invited us out to visit them in, in California. We got to go out there and have a great time. And uh, one of the neatest things was I was like a kid in a candy store because that's the original, the original Disneyland. But again, the experience was so fantastic that we want to go back. Everybody wants to go back. And that's what we, we look at with our dogs is how do we get that same reaction back to them? Well, we have to teach them that going to the veterinarian, going to doggy daycare, going to the kennel, going to the dog park, going on mom and pa trail walks, doing these things with mom and dad is going to be the exciting thing. So that's the kind of stuff that you want to look at when building this kind of relationship with your dog and understanding what the future is, you know, and that's going to be what it is. So, you know, you're going to have to go to a veterinarian. So you need to start training your dog to go to the veterinarian. So it's going to be bringing your dog there, even when it's not important, you know, even when it's not a checkup. All right. Hey guys, listen, I just want to thank everybody for listening today. Follow me on Facebook uh, and on our Facebook lives today. I want to you do a huge shout out to all the moms out there. Happy Mother's Day from me to you. And uh, I hope you guys have a great, wonderful morning. And a great, wonderful week. And I can't wait to uh, see you and talk to you guys again uh, next week, uh, Sundays from 7 to 8. And again, if you have any questions, concerns, you want to know more about me, about my business, if you want to have your dog trained by us, please feel free to check us out at bluelinecanine.com. Follow us on Facebook at Michael J. Solar Dog Talk or Blue Line Canine Dog Training. We'll be happy to help you. If you're looking for some marketing space, we have some uh, availability on our show here on Sundays. Uh, just feel free to give me a call. All right. You guys have a great day day. Tune in Monday morning at 8.15 to hear the PNC Bank High School Lacrosse Monday morning matchup with Booker Corrigan and hear about this week's biggest high school lacrosse games around the state. Sponsored by PNC Bank. Rocky is four months old and learning new commands with Blue Line Canine Training and Rehabilitation. Rocky, today we're teaching you your name. Uh, Rocky? I'm a chihuahua, but okay. Rocky, next you will learn how to come. Here I am, here I am. Rocky, now wait at the door. I'm here. Where are we going? Where are we going? Puppy and off-leash training programs customized to meet your needs with homework assignments for you and your dog. What? Homework? Blue Line Canine Training Rehabilitation. Visit blk9.com. Right now at the Home Depot, pros can save up to 20% on bulk price shingles or up to 30% on bulk price insulation. If you're buying a lot of either one, those are some pretty hefty savings. But we don't stop there. With next day job site delivery, you won't have to wait long or choose in-store pickup, and you won't have to wait at all. Save a whole lot of time and money with bulk pricing on shingles and insulation. Now at the Home Depot. More saving, more doing. See store for details, U.S. and Guam only. Are you passionate about being an electrician? Are you looking for a job with true opportunity for advancement and competitive pay? If you're looking to tap into the fast-paced commercial and industrial electrical field, Shaw Electric is looking for qualified electricians like you and is hiring now. Apply now by emailing employment at shaw-electricllc.com or call 410-565-6454, extension 101, for more information. That's 410-565-6454, extension 101. Shaw Electric, built on a foundation of building integrity. Anytime is a good time for a Box Hill Crab Cake. Hi, this is Vinny Serrato, and let me give you a few ideas. Planning a party? Tommy and Chris at Box Hill Pizzeria will help you plan your event. Special gift? Mother's Day's coming up. Surprise her with Box Hill's famous crab cakes. They'll even ship them to her. Plan a graduation party? Let Box Hill cater it. By the way, Tommy and Chris are happy to announce their expansion. Details to follow soon. As always, Tommy and Chris appreciate your business. For more details, go to BoxHillCrabCakes.com. Hey, Baltimore homeowners, Ed Norris here for Renters Warehouse, your residential property management experts. Are you a part-time landlord, rock and rent collection and maintenance repairs? You're buried in lunchtime errands and after-dinner tenant tasks that take you away from the good life? 
well, do it yourself first. It's time to outsource your headaches so you can increase your opportunities. Let Renters Warehouse manage your properties and set you back on the fast track to financial and lifestyle freedom. The Rent State Advisors at Renters Warehouse specialize in tenant placement with 18-month warranties. They do the rent collection, maintenance coordination, paperwork, processing, and much, much more. There's no marketing fees, no cancellation fees, just total focus on making you money. So stop managing and start multiplying your investment properties with Renters Warehouse. Turn your attention to growing your portfolio and your earnings and let them take care of the rest. They'll even connect you to rent estate savvy agents and lenders. So call them. Call a rent estate advisor today at 410-878-7722 or go to renterswarehouse.com. That's 410-878-7722 or renterswarehouse.com. Renters Warehouse, the professional landlords of rent estate. Jeremy Kahn here. Right now, you can save up to $8,000 off MSRP at Wilkins Buick GMC. They're celebrating Memorial Day with a month of amazing savings, including up to $8,000 off select Buick GMC vehicles. Plus, if you mention my name, you get an extra $250 off. The deals are hot, but time is running out. Get to Wilkins Buick GMC today. Everybody wins at Wilkins. 2017 GMC Acadia stock number GA17615 MSRP 46465 Buy it for 38000 980 buy for price includes $4,350 GM rebate and $3,135 dealer discount. See dealer for details. Preceding was a paid program, and the views expressed on this show do not represent the views of WJZFM, CBS Radio, its sponsors, or affiliates. This is CBS Radio's WJZFM, HD1 Catonsville, Baltimore. Now broadcasting from the fan studios, built by Thompson Creek Window Company, the one window replacement company that does it all.